I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with a fun Stitch It Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tips by Nancy Zeman. First, let's take a look at the project we're making today. We'll be serging our one seam skirt. Our new one seam skirt is made with knit fabric, three inch wide knit elastic, Clover's retractable tape measure, heart shaped straight pins, one inch strips of Wonder Under, size 80 EL serger needles, our Burnett 64 airlock serger, our Burnett 42 Funlet cover stitch machine, and our brand new one seam skirt pattern. So our new one seam skirt from just one yard of knit fabric and about a yard of three inch elastic. Our skirt has no elastic casing and is so fast to make with our easiest ever serging techniques. To stitch our one seam skirt, we'll start by choosing our fabrics. We've selected a crepe knit fabric. And a crepe knit fabric is a medium weight double knit. Another great choice is a ponte knit fabric. Ponte is another double knit fabric available in many colors and you can coordinate your elastic with your ponte knits. The next step is to prepare your fabric for the stitching process. Head to the ironing board and spray starch the fabric. Spray starching the knit fabric is a great tip, a classic time-saving tip by my longtime friend Nancy. It stabilizes the fabric while you're handling it and serging it, and it's much easier to serge a seam when it has a little bit of a starch to it. The next step is to measure your waist. We'll measure your waist and then cut the elastic two inches shorter than your waist measurement. So just wrap the tape measure around your waist, find that measurement, and then cut the elastic two inches shorter. So we've cut our elastic two inches shorter than the waist measurement. We'll then cut our fabric rectangle for the skirt. To determine the size of the rectangle, we start with one yard of knit fabric, and then you need to cut the width. Okay. So we'll go back to the measuring process mm -hmm. and measure your hip area. The hip area is located about nine inches below your waist. Hmm. So measure that hip area and mark your rectangle two inches wider. So we've cut our elastic two inches shorter than your waist. We're marking our rectangle two inches wider than your hip area. And that's when you want to take your fabric rectangle and try it on. So go by your mirror, try mm -hmm. on your skirt. It's really just a rectangle <laughs> of fabric at this point. And with straight pins or safety pins, uh, try that skirt on and see if you like that two inches of ease. If you want a fuller skirt, add a couple inches. You're the designer. So add a couple inches to that width if you want a little bit more room in your skirt. Okay. That's it. Then you cut your rectangle, that desired measurement. So we have our next sample is already cut and we're, we're making a little mini skirt sample <laughs> on, the ironing, on the slanty board today. So here's our elastic in our fabric and you can see the elastic is about two inches shorter okay. than the skirt rectangle. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a little marking. We need to quarter mark. We'll quarter mark our elastic and we'll take the marking pen and we'll just mark that halfway point. We'll also need to find the quarter, quarter mark measurement. So we'll fold that elastic again and quarter mark that. Okay. And try to get all the markings on the same side mm -hmm. of the elastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can fold again and find that quarter marking. And then we do the same. We do the same to the fabric rectangle. So we can just either use pins or fold and find and mark. We'll place okay. a pin on the back reverse side of the fabric. I've placed a pin at the halfway mark and the same. We can also use pins to do our quarter marking. So here's our quarter mark, and then we fold one more time to find your quarter marking. And we're using pins because the fabric is the same color as the marking pen. So you could use a different color marking pen or do your quarter, quarter marking with pins, excuse me. We then align our quarter markings of the elastic with the pins. And is it a good idea to start in the center? I like to start in the center and you'll see that we've placed the elastic and the fabric right sides together. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, an important step to place the fabric and the elastic right side together. So we take our pins and quarter mar markings, align them and pin. And then I'll add one more pin. 
to the side. And since we're surging this skirt, a great tip from my longtime friend Nancy is to place your pins parallel to the edge of the fabric. Okay. If we're heading to the serger, that's a great tip. So we can put our pins at the end parallel to the cut edge. That way when we head towards the serger needle and blade, we can mm -hmm. easily remove the pins as we're sewing. So that's it. We've quarter marked, pinned, and we're ready to head to the sewing machine. We're heading to the serger machine today to stitch our one seam skirt. So at the overlock machine, we'll set our Burnett 64 airlock serger for a three thread flat lock stitch. We'll stitch that seam with the fabric facing the throat plate and the elastic facing upward. Mm -hmm. We're stitching the edge of that fabric, trimming off a little bit of that fabric and stitching the elastic to the base fabric. And our next step shows that sample already sewn. And here is that elastic sewn to the top of the skirt fabric. And it, at first glance, it just looks like a serger mm -hmm. overlock stitch, and it is. But changing the settings on the machine with the tensions gives you a little bit of ease with that fabric. Okay. When we turn the elastic right side up, when I pull that, you can see those ladder stitches start oh. to form. And that flat lock stitch is great for stitching elastic to the top of a skirt or slacks. Mm -hmm. And then you just pull those threads open. And what's happening, the threads are moving to the underside and we're revealing that ladder stitch. So you can do a little stretching. The next step would be to turn that to the wrong side. So we fussy uh, position mm -hmm. those ladder stitches and turn it to the wrong side. And then you can see how the skirt is starting to tape shape. And it almost, once you've stretched that out, it wants to turn on its own. Mm -hmm. Because of the way we pulled that seam open, it's already opening the seam and you don't have to head to the ironing board and press that <laughs> so you can skip that, that step. The next step is a side seam. So we're gonna take the skirt, place it right sides together and do a little pinning. We know that we can place those pins parallel with the cut edge and we can put a couple pins in there and we need to change the setting. On our Burnett 64 airlock serger, we're changing the setting to a four thread overlock stitch. Mm -hmm. That's your basic construction, garment construction stitch. It's four thread, which gives it stability so you're not popping stitches when you're sitting or walking with your skirt. It's a nice stable stitch. Okay. At the serger, we've stitched that seam, that long side seam. And on the next sample, you can see that already stitched here. Before we head to the next step, we wanna hide our threads. So on this little sample, we're showing that you have those serger thread tails. You want to bury those serger thread tails within the seam. So we use a double-eyed needle and we thread the serger tail into one end and we just pull. We pull that into the seam and then trim that away. And then you can add a little fray block to secure that stitch in the seam. Put a little dab of fray block right on that uh, and seam, okay. and that'll hold it into place and keep it uh, stable and from unraveling. If we were just to cut this off, it could ravel in a little bit. Sure. So we want to secure those threads, kind of like back stitching on a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. Bury your threads instead oh, of back stitching because idea. we don't back stitch on a serger overlock machine. So that's what we did at the top of the skirt and at the bottom near the hem. Okay. On the next step, you can see we folded the elastic. We've refolded it to the wrong side of the skirt. And we have a seam on one side because it's a one seam skirt and a fold on the other. And I like to secure that elastic it, so it stays on the mm -hmm. underside, on the inside of the skirt. So I head to the sewing machine and I stitch. I stitch in that seam, the well of that seam. And on the right side of the fabric, you don't really see that. No. It's a slight zigzag stitch, which gives it, gives it a little mm -hmm. bit of stability uh, from popping those stitches. If we were to straight stitch that on a knit, you can pop those stitches right. pretty easily. So we just use a slight zigzag stitch. We call it a wobble stitch mm -hmm. right in the well of that seam and then in the po opposing opposite. So that could be one side seam and your second seam. We're not sharing it today, but if your fabric is a narrow fabric mm -hmm. and you, your measurement for your skirt rectangle 
is larger than the fabric, you can make a two seam skirt pattern. Oh, sure. So it's the same technique, you do the same measurings, but you create two panels instead of okay. one. So you'd have a two seam skirt with that method. The next step is to hem. We are hemming our skirt just by turning it to the wrong side and top stitching the hem into place. Mm -hmm. Now you could do this hemming at your regular sewing machine and use that same wobble stitch. Okay. You could also insert a double needle into your sewing machine and two spools of thread at the top and top stitch that with a double needle. Oh, okay. Or you could use a cover stitch only machine like our Burnett 42. Mm. It's exclusively a cover stitch machine. You can do cover stitch in narrow or wide and it works great. And the machine is always set for a cover stitch and leaving your other serger machine available for other stitching. That'll save you time going back and forth and not changing your settings. You just go from one right. machine to the next. Right, and cover stitches are great functional stitches for hemming and also for decorative projects too. There's oh, fun yeah. options you can do with the stitch. Before we stitch the hem, we need to apply a little bit of stabilizers. So we are using one inch Wonder Under. And those Wonder Under strips you could purchase as one inch or you cut mm -hmm. them. We just cut those. We took the regular yardage of Wonder Under and we cut them into one inch strips. Oops. And then you head to the ironing board and you apply. You apply that one inch strip of Wonder Under to that lower hem. And then you release the paper backing and remove that paper backing. Mm -hmm. You then press up at the ironing board that one inch hem. It stabilizes the hem and holds that just in place. Mm -hmm. That's like putting a pin every quarter inch with having no pins. So it's a no pinning fusing method. And it holds that hem into place. So when then you head to your cover stitch mm -hmm. machine, you can easily stitch that hem. Stitch that hem in the round and then over stitch the beginning stitches to lock those into place. Lift the presser foot, advance the thread through the back of the machine and cut those threads. So you wanna leave about three inches of thread at that seam and then use that same double needle okay. and bury those stitches. Or you could thread a darning needle. Mm -hmm. If you had a darning needle, you could thread those threads through that darning needle uh, to the back side and bury them within your stitches. Okay. Add that little uh, drop of fray block mm -hmm. to that seam and that's it. Your skirt is done. And this is already hemmed. You can see with the cover stitch that on that right side of the fabric, it has two stitching lines. It almost looks like you used a double needle to right, stitch it the does. hem. This is what the cover stitch machine does. It gives that nice little bit of give in that seam with two stitching lines on the front and that cover stitch in the back. And that's it, our skirt is done. We turn it right side out and your skirt is done. And I didn't mention, you're the designer. You could make your skirt a different length if you want to. So once you, before you hem it, you can try it on and adjust the length. Maybe you want a longer a skirt or a shorter skirt. Oh, that's nice. Our new one seam skirt is so fun to sew and fast to make. So this new summer wardrobe staple in just two hours or less. We hope you've enjoyed this Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again next time for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Riley Blake Designs, OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, and shopnzp.com. Bernina, made to create.